Your .NET applications heavily relies on secrets, typically stored in the app settings.json file. However, storing secrets and sensitive information inside a plain text file could pose some security issues. Let's be honest, not everyone prioritizes security until it's too late. But fear not. With the Azure Key Vault, you gain the power of securing your secrets effectively, eliminating the need for any text sharing. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a Key Vault, configure your .NET application to load the secrets from the Secure Vault, and best of all, the ability to refresh and reload your configuration without the need to restart your application or any downtime. So let's jump into the code. I have here uh, an ASP.NET application running with an entity framework, and I have three different minimal APIs, get the list of to-dos, uh, get a to-do by an ID, and adding a to-do item. Very simple one. And inside here in our app settings.json, I have a default connection string, which is the connection string for our SQL server on Azure. If we hit run, we can run the application and I can get a to-do. So I have a to-do to upload this video and I did, you are watching it. And we can also create a to-do. So let's create a simple to do to just to subscribe to my channel and it should be completed. Thank you for that sub. And yeah, it's now created. And same thing, I already published the application. So I have a published profile and I already published the application to Azure. If you can see it here, this is the resource group that I'm using as this is the web app. And same thing, I can get the list of to-dos and it will retrieve it. So I have two to-dos. If you notice, the local one and the cloud one is using the same connection string to the database. So now let's start creating our key vault and moving our secrets around. So to do that, I'm going to go to the terminal and inside here, I'm going to use the Azure CLI to do that. So AZ key vault create. I'm going to change the name for something unique. And this is the same resource group that I'm using here. So if we hit enter, we wait a few seconds for it to create. Okay, it's now created and the key vault is now showing in our resource group. So let's go to the key vault. The first thing that we need to do is to grant access our web application to use the key vault. Basically, a key vault is secure. You don't have access to it and you need to create some access policies. So first, go to your web app and enable the system manage identity. You scroll down to the identity and you will find just by default, if your app is just created, it will be turned off. I already created the system assigned manage identity so I can copy that. And let's go back to the key vault and we need to add a new access policy. Let's create. So our application only need a get and a list access for the secret. There is no need for other thing. We are just gonna retrieve the data from the key vault and here we can paste our object ID, which is the app registration that uh, we created by default when we enabled the system manage identity. Next, next, create. And now we added this uh, access policy to for our application. In an enterprise application, you will have one key vault that contains most of your secrets. You can separate it to a different key vault, but there is no need. Uh, so for us, it will be one key vault and we will use it for multiple applications. For that, we are going to create multiple secrets here. So to distinguish between the secrets and the application, I'm going to use a prefix, which is the application name before creating the secret. So the application name in our case, let's say it's key vault demo dash. This is our prefix. This is how we identify the application. 
let's say you have another app, let's say off dash and something else. And then I'm going to have the same structure that we have in the app settings.json file. So if we go back to the app setting.json file, it is connection strings. And I'm going to put dash dash here. And the other one is default connection. And for the secret, it will be the actual connection string that we have. And now let's create. A secret has been created. And notice we have the prefix that we are going to configure the code for it. Let's remove this connection string from here. And this is now a secret. Let's go back to the program. What we need to do first is we need to configure our builder, our configuration to use the Azure key vault. We need first to install a few NuGet packages. So let's do that. The first one is the Azure extensions ASP.NET Core configuration.secrets. Let's install it. And the other one is Azure.identity. And also let's install Azure.identity. Everything is now installed. So let's hit back here and start coding. We need first to add a setting here with a key vault name. We are going to use the key vault name to point out to our key vault in the code. So key vault name, and we already created something called KV YouTube demo with .NET. That's a long name, but it's fine. Go back to program. Let's create a URI first, var key vault URI equal HTTPS, yeah. So we get the key vault name from the configuration dot vault dot Azure dot net. All the key vaults has the same domain basically. So this is a vault URI. And then what we need to do is, I'm not gonna use keep copilot for that. So builder dot configuration dot add Azure key vault. And here first you need to specify let me format it a bit. You need to specify the URI. So let's change that to a URI. This is a URI. And here we can specify key vault URI. And then we need to specify the credentials used to connect to that key vault. You can use the default Azure the credentials basically using the system manage identity that we enabled first but there is other options as well that i will not cover in this video let me know in the comment below if you want me to cover that in a future video like certificates or even the user manage identity so for us let's create the new default azure credential and the missing one and yeah, that's it. So our code now is configured to get the default Azure credentials. Now we need to create our own custom Key Vault Secret Manager to actually load and check our keys depending on the prefix and the actual structure of the secret name. To do that, let's create a new class and we can call it custom secret manager and we need to inherit from key vault secret manager the first thing that i need to do is to create a new uh, string called prefix and i'm going to initialize it from the constructor but here i'm not going to set it as prefix i'm going to set it as prefix dash same as we did in the key vault here. And now we can override a few methods that we need. The first one that I need to override is the load method, which is basically a Boolean that specify if I need to load this secret to the app or not. Let's remove that. And yeah, I'm, I need all the secrets that start with our prefix. And another method that I'm going to override as well is the get key 
try to implement that, which is secret dot name, and we need to substring prefix dot length, and then we need to replace the double dash with configuration path dot key delimiter, which is how .NET understands our app settings.json, which is the double dot here. Don't put it as a string, use that static string uh, key delimiter here. To use the custom secret manager, let's go back to the program.cs and here it's another overload for the add Azure key vault that accept a new custom secret, a new secret manager and it is our custom secret manager and let's put the key vault demo as our prefix here and uh, that's it basically to configure the key vault let's try to build and let's test it out by publishing the app to azure i'm running i'm going to run the publish profile and it is published now we click on the link First time load after the publish, it will take a few time to warm up. Okay, the app is up and running. Let's test it out. And if everything is correct, we should be able to retrieve some to-dos because if you remember, we changed the app settings default connection to sys and this is not a valid app connection string. So let's execute and wait. And yeah, we are receiving few uh, to do items as well. And now I'm going to show you how to make our application auto reload the configuration from the key vault. First, why do we need that? Let's say we are using the log lever here and it's, let's say it is error level by default. And then your app is running on production and there is some bug and you need to debug more but you don't want to go manually and change that in your app settings and publish or maybe change it in Azure configuration and then the app will restart and you don't have time and you don't want to lose the context for the app. So what we can do is we can translate that to a key vault and we add the logging level into the key vault as a secret and then when we change the secret value, we should refresh and we should view it directly without the need to the, to the restart. How to do that? Simply by going to the program.cs, another overload for the add Azure Key Vault, where we can specify the configuration option. To do that, remove this one here and create a new Azure Key Vault configuration option. Inside of it, you can specify first the manager, which is our manager that we already created. And the other one is the reload interval. So let's say we can specify it for 30 seconds. And here, by doing that, our application will reload every 30 seconds the key vault secrets value and put it in the configuration. So let's publish that and wait to test it out. It's now published. The test that I'm going to do is I'm going to the key vault and I'm going to change the default connection string from an actual connection string to a different value and then when we waiting here and when we execute the get it should fail because the connection string was updated. So let's refresh our application to see if it has been reloaded or not. Okay, we are now using the latest version. Let's execute to test it out. Yeah, we are still getting all the to-do items. And now what we can change here is we can add a new version. Let's go back in the secrets. You go to the secrets, add a new version, and let's add not a connection string, random uh, string here, and we can create. It is now a new version, and the current version is the not a connection string thing. So if we wait like a 30 seconds, let me close this here. If we wait a 30 seconds and we execute, the configuration will be changed and we should fail. So let's execute, still getting it. Let's wait a few seconds. 
And now the API failed because the connection string is not in the correct format. And we didn't even restart the application. The secret value has changed. There is unlimited possibility for that. And you can do a lot of cool stuff. Please note that this approach should be applied only for production. For development use, first, this will not work because we are using the default Azure credentials and your local host, your local machine is not authorized to access the key vault. This is one. Second, you don't want to configure Azure key vault as your secret manager locally while doing the development because the connection is a bit slow and you are in a better place if you are basically using the user secrets. Basically, if you right click here, tools.net user secrets, you can add a user secrets and here you can actually uh, specify the same connections, strings and default connection, whatever for local host server, if you have a local host database and that's by default this is very secure and it is not depending on your project so there is no mistake by pushing that into uh, the git repository and here your app settings will stay as this is now a secret but here we need to do a simple thing like if it is a production environment we need to configure it to do that builder dot environment dot is production and then move your code here into this section now there is no change here and your code will only run if it is on production that's it for me guys make sure to subscribe and like the video and if you want to check other videos you can see it here and i will catch you in the next one bye